Today we're going to be writing some tests for this React application that is built using Mirage. It's a to-do application, and we can see when we first visit it, we see a loading message, and then we see a list of to-dos being populated. Over here in the console, we can see that our app is making a network request to slash API slash to-dos that Mirage is mocking out, and that's where the data that's powering this interface is coming from. We can check off to-dos, we can clear them, we can create a new to-do, and we can see that this interface is built kind of with an optimistic UI, so kind of as we change this, the UI updates immediately, even though uh, the network request is pending. And so that's kind of how we've built this application. And over here we can see kind of all the network requests that have gone out to Mirage. And then we just have kind of a second route up here. So if we visit it and come back, we can see that all of our changes uh, will persist to Mirage's in-memory database for the life of this session. Now, if we refresh this, it'll start all over again with a clean slate and the initial three to-dos. So we wanna write some tests for this application. This is a Create React app, which comes with Jest, and we've gone ahead and installed and wired up React testing library, which we'll be using to write our tests. So right here we have our first test, which says that it renders our app component without errors. And over here, we can see that this test is passing. But this is not a very useful test. So let's go ahead and write kind of our first meaningful test. Now, in our dev environment, we have these three to-dos that we're kind of starting out with in our Mirage server. And kind of the initial state of this app when we first load it is to show this loading message and then render these to-dos. Now, if we come back and pop open kind of our Mirage server definition, which is just uh, right here in this file alongside our code, we can see here that uh, these are our development seeds and these are the three to-dos that we're starting out uh, our database seeded with. So if we just comment these out and come back and look at our app, we'll see that after the loading message goes away, we don't see any to-dos now and we just see this message that says everything's done. So I think that would be kind of a good initial state to get our app into within our test. So instead of just rendering this, we kind of want to reproduce this behavior here. We want to render the app, wait for the loading message to disappear, and then assert that this everything's done message appears on the screen. So we can do that using the helpers from React Testing Library. So after we render, we first want to wait for the loading message to disappear. So we can go ahead and import wait for element to be removed. And we can see here when we invoke this, that this takes a callback function. And so this callback function needs to return an HTML element. And the way we can get the element itself is by using the return value from render here. So we can go ahead and do structure get by text, which is a helper here. And we can use that to go ahead and query our DOM by loading. And we'll see if we hover over these waiters from React Testing Library, they actually return a promise. So we need to await these waiters, which means this test needs to be uh, an async test. And so if we save this and come take a look at our console output, we'll see that we're actually getting an error now. And it's telling us that the network request failed. And that's because, you know, initially when our app loads, it makes a get request to our API endpoint. But in our test, we're just rendering the app and Mirage isn't intercepting any requests here. We can see over here in our kind of development bootstrapping file, the index.js file, this is where we import our server and call make server here. But in our test, we haven't done that yet. And so it's usually a best practice when working with Mirage to share a server across development and testing. That way you don't have to duplicate any of this routing logic or any models or factories you use between the two environments. And this way that we're exporting it is just kind of a convention. We're just exporting a function here and we've added some options to this function to specify the environment, which defaults to development, but in our test, we're gonna use the test environment. So let's come here and get Mirage working in our test. We wanna call make server here and we can pass in an environment 
of test here. And this is just going to stop Mirage from logging by default and stop it from adding a delay to keep our tests fast. But all that's kind of configurable. So if we move this down into our test here, go ahead and make our Mirage server, and then render our app. Now when we come back to our test, we see that it's passing. So it indeed is rendering without errors, it looks like. And uh, we can actually go ahead and inspect the state of the DOM after our loading screen has been removed here. If we just get the container from this render function, and then we use the pretty DOM function from React Testing Library, pass our container in, and we just go ahead and console.log that. So if we save this, we'll see that Jest is going to print out kind of a snapshot of the DOM at this point in the test. And there we can see home and about our two routes, the to-dos label, and then here we see our message, everything's done, just like we would expect looking at an app that doesn't have any to-dos. So let's go ahead and add an assertion that this is actually here, because this is what we expect. So we can do that using expect, and we can get by text, everything's done. And we just expect that element to be in the document. So let's save this, and it looks like everything passes. And if we were to you know, change this to something that's wrong, like we typo here, we'll see we get an error that it was unable to find an element with the text uh, with our typo. So this is, in fact, working. Mirage is actually handling this response here. And now we have kind of a meaningful test that says it shows a message when there are no to-dos. Let's write another test. We want to make sure that it shows existing to-dos. And so this is going to be the case that we started out with. If we go ahead and drop our development seeds back in and we look at the app, when we first load it, we see three to-dos in the list here. And so that's what we want to test next. And so here we're kind of copying this uh, setup code for our server. Every test is going to expect the server to exist since the app expects the server to exist. So we can go ahead and extract this out into a before each block, which is a feature of Jest. And we actually want to make sure to clean up our Mirage server after each test runs. And so we'll go ahead and drop an after each here. And we can just use a variable, let server, make server returns the server, and then an after each we can call server.shutdown. So if we get rid of this, and let's use only to run our first test again, save all that, come back, looks like we still have a passing test. So now let's write our second test here. So the cool thing about working with Mirage in our test suite like this is that we can actually manipulate the server directly in a test. And so by default, our server starts off as empty. That's one of the things that this test environment does. It ignores the seeds here because each test is basically its own scenario where you can see the database in exactly the state that you need for whatever behavior that you're testing. These are kind of our development only seeds and so that's one more reason we want to customize the environment of our Mirage server during testing. So back in our test, we kind of start off with a minimal version of our API server here. But in this case, we want to start it off with some to-dos. So we can use server.create to-do. And then we can go ahead and pass in a text here, test to-do. And that will end up in our Mirage database before we render the app, such that when we render this and our React app makes an API request to the network, Mirage should respond with these to-dos. So now we should have a failing test because everything's not done. And indeed, we see an error here. Shows existing to-dos, unable to find element with text, everything's done. And if we look at a snapshot of the DOM here, we see to-dos, and then here we see our unordered list, and we see our first list item here, which is kind of hard to do. 
we see the checkbox here, and then we see the text field with the value of test to do. So looking over in our app, that's basically this part of the DOM right here. And so you can see uh, we wrap each one of these list items with a data test ID. So far we've been using these selectors get by text. And if you take a look at this, you know, there's a bunch of selectors that we get from React testing library. And one of them is actually get by test ID. Test IDs are a good way to just add a slight bit of abstraction to your testing code. You know, you can imagine that uh, we might change how this is presented over time. And if we change the text content of this or the value of this in a small way, we could break a lot of our existing tests. Uh, the test ID is just a, a small abstraction that says uh, this element being present is really what we care about. And so we like to use these test IDs here. And so instead of expecting this message to be in the DOM, we actually want to query the DOM for all the to-dos. In this case, we have three different ones, but over on our test, we're only creating one. So we can actually go ahead and use the get all by test ID. This is kind of the versions of these selectors that you use whenever you're querying for a set. And this is just going to be to do. And again, that's coming from this attribute on our list items right here. And those are our to do's. And we expect that to do's dot length to be one. And now we have a passing test. And of course, if we were to create another to do, now we see we have a failure here. So if we uncomment this only, we now have two passing tests. And if we pop over to our actual component here and we search for loading, we'll see that this message also has a data test ID of loading. So if we wanted to, we could come up here and say, get by test ID. And we're just gonna use uh, that, that attribute up there. And then also get by test ID right here as well. Loading, save that. And now we have kind of a passing suite again. This is just an approach, again, to reduce the brittleness of our test suite. Now we just need to make sure that there's some element that has this test ID in it. But if we were to say, change what this message looked like from a paragraph tag to maybe something with an image or something like that, all we need to make sure is that this is present in the DOM and those tests will pass. There's one more change we can make to the second test here we are actually passing in the text of this to-do when we're creating it, and we're calling this test to-do. And again, if we were to grab the container from this render function and go ahead and log out a call to that pretty DOM function passing in the container, we can see here that that is in fact showing up in the DOM. But this test is not so great because we could change this to some gibberish, save it, and come back, and our test is still going to pass. So this detail right here of the actual text of the to-do is not really needed for any of these assertions, and it also doesn't really help anyone reading this test to better understand kind of what we're trying to test here, which is just that these show up in the DOM. So we could actually just delete this completely this whole set of attribute overrides here, and just let Mirage create kind of a basic to-do. Now we can go ahead and log out server.db.todos, and this is gonna give us kind of everything in Mirage's server. And if we come here, we'll see that this is kind of just an array with one object in it with the auto assigned ID of one. And then if we look at our DOM container, we'll see that this to do of ours is now blank. So this is better in the sense that there's no extraneous information in this test, but now it's kind of worse in the sense that this is not really realistic. If we were to come back to our server over here and kind of do the same thing with our dev seeds, then we can see what this looks like. And you know, this is not 
really the best kind of setup for a test. Even though it's just a testing environment, this is not really realistic. So Mirage has a solution for this kind of new problem that we've introduced by trying to keep our tests you know, small and relevant, and that is factories. So we can define a factory for our to-do by defining kind of a top-level key here called factories, and we're gonna do one for the to-do model, and we're gonna make this a factory. And here we can specify default values for our to-dos. So we could say the default value for text is my to-do. And there we see they all have my to-do on them. Or we could make this a function that takes in kind of an index and returns to-do with the index. And that index starts at zero, so maybe we'll add one to it. So now we have this simple way to get kind of more realistic looking default data from our server just by calling server.create. And over here, uh, kind of in our more curated development seeds, we can see that to-dos also have an is done property. And we can definitely imagine that omitting that could cause problems down the road. So that would also be a good thing to add to our factory, is done. And we can just default that to false. And so now when we call server create, we kind of get these minimal versions of the to-dos that are more realistic and valid for our application. Now in development, we might still want to use these, so we can go ahead and put these back. But now over in our test, we're just calling create to-do here. And if we run this test, now we can see where we're logging the to-dos from Mirage we have kind of this full object here with an ID, text, and is done property, and that's coming from this log right here. And we can also look at the DOM snapshot and see that our input has a value of to do one. So I think this is uh, an improved test because some of the extraneous details were removed. And if we wanted to kind of create that environment that we typically have in dev, we could go ahead and easily create three right here. We should get a failing test because we have three and we only expected one. And we expect there now to be kind of three in the DOM. And now we have a passing test. So I think this is a, a little bit improved from what we had before. Let's go ahead and write one more test. And this time we're going to be testing that it can create a new to-do. So hopping back over to our development scenario, if we comment these out and we look at the app, we kind of load up a clean slate here and we can type in new to do in this input field. We save it. We see that our app makes a post request here and our UI updates. So let's go ahead and write a test for this feature. We'll start at Mirage with kind of an empty backend here. And we'll go ahead and render the app, wait for the loading screen to go away. And uh, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and drop an assertion right here that says, uh, we expect everything's done to be in the document. And the next step, again, kind of replaying our behavior here is to input some text into this field. So we can go ahead and inspect this. And we can see that this is part of a form that has a data test ID of new to do form. So why don't we go ahead and get the form here, new to do form equals get by test ID, new to do form. And we want to type into this form. We can do that using the user event API. User event comes from another import. We can import user event from testing library user event. And what this lets us do is call dot type, passing in an input here and our new to do text. Now the input, we can go ahead and get that from our form. Our form is the element here. We can go ahead and call query selector off this and we'll just look for the input of type text. So we get the form, 
we type new to do into it. And if we want to check our work again, we can go ahead and call pre-dom on container. Go ahead and log this out. Get container here and take a look. So we see the everything's done message. And up here for our new to do, we actually do see the value has been set. And we can just change this to not match the placeholder, walk the dog and make sure everything's wired up. There we go. So next we want to submit the form and we can do that using fire event, which is going to uh, be automatically imported here from testing library react. And we want to fire the submit event on our form, new to do form. And so again, uh, we have an optimistic UI here. That means when I type in walk the dog and hit enter, this is going to be immediately appended to this list. And in the background, we're gonna see a saving indicator right here while kind of our server, in this case, our mock server Mirage, but in production, it would be a real server handles that request. But because the UI updates immediately, we can go ahead and assert that this new to-do item is actually in that list. So we can use the same code up here. Go ahead and grab the to-dos from the DOM at this point. We only expect uh, to-dos.length to be one. And we can also make an assertion against the actual uh, to-do itself. So we can say expect to-dos the first one. And again, we can go ahead and query selector here for the actual input. And if we come look at the app, these to-do items are this kind of wrapping li element, and there's this input right here with type text that has the value that we're interested in, that we would expect to see from our new to-do. So we can go ahead and just query for input type text, and we can assert that the value there, that should be equal to walk the dog. So let's save this and check out our test. Looks like it passes. We can also assert against the checkbox here because when we set the checkbox to true, if we were to open up kind of our component profiler here and find one of these to-dos, we see that the to-do object has an is done property and that's what's kind of mapped to the checkbox. So when we create a new to-do, you know, this is an important part of the app, type something in here and hit enter, we expect is done to be false, but from the perspective of the user, we expect that checkbox to be unchecked. So we can write kind of another expectation here, go ahead and grab the checkbox and assert that checked, we actually expect that to be false. And there we go, passing test. So this is pretty cool. We're waiting for our app to load. We are finding the new to-do form and submitting it. And then we're asserting that our UI updates. Now, one thing we, we forgot to assert was that after we kind of save something, this new to-do field should be cleared out. So we can go ahead and add that because that's another part of the behavior that's important. We would expect the new to-do form, query selector, input, type text value to be the empty string. Now we have that aspect of the feature covered. So we're doing a good job covering the UI aspects of our React application. But we're not really verifying that our app is sending over the right data. You know, whenever we create this, we kind of see the saving indicator up here. We also see the post request and, you know, arguably those are the most important parts of this feature here because that's what actually saves the to do. So how might we cover that behavior in our test? Well, sometimes it makes sense to make assertions against the actual network request that your React app is making. So in this case, we would assert that the payload looks something like this and that this outgoing post request actually happens. 
But with these kind of UI tests that we've been writing, I like to keep both the setup and the assertion part of our tests basically as high level as possible. And so in this case, you know, if we were just talking about this application with a product person and we said, you know, when you type in test and hit enter, you'll see a saving indicator and then it'll go away and that will create one to do in the server. I really like my assertions to kind of match that level of abstraction as much as possible. So what might that look like kind of in our test here? Well, we could do exactly that. Just like up here where we wait for kind of the loading indicator to be removed from the DOM, after we save this, we could go ahead and say, now let's wait for our saving indicator to be removed from the DOM. And if we pop back over to our to-dos app here and we look for saving, we'll see here that if we have uh, this is saving state is true, we're gonna render this SVG. That's kind of the cloud icon you see here whenever we make a mutation uh, that's indicating that, that the request is being processed. And this SVG has a data test ID of saving. So we could go ahead and say, let's wait for saving to be removed. And that's gonna make sure that that saving indicator is rendering. So we can go ahead and save this, come look at our test suite, and we see that it passes. And you know, if we refactored this app and someone forgot to actually have this saving indicator in the new version of the app, we're actually gonna get a failure of our test suite because Jess is expecting to find that in the DOM and then wait for it to be removed, but it doesn't see it anymore. So just with that, uh, we are covering that behavior. We're making sure that this element is actually in the DOM after we submit the form and that it's removed. But this still doesn't cover the actual network request that's going out. And in order to cover that, we can just make assertions against the state of our Mirage server directly. So we can just say, we expect server.db.todos.length to be one, because we're starting out this test with no todos. After we create one, we would expect one to be kind of in our Mirage server. So if we save this, we see we have a passing test. And again, you know, if we wanted to be extra confident here that we have everything wired up, we could add some expectations to the beginning of our test. You know, some people like to do this when their test is a little bit more complicated and we'd expect there to be zero up here. And there we see that it's actually true. We can also add an expectation that that first to do in our server has some of the correct data. So if I were to just save this, we should see an error because that to-do should be one. It's actually an object. And right there we see what's in Mirage is this POJO with an auto assigned ID of one, is done is false, and the text is walk the dog. So we could just say that we expect that to-do's text to be what we typed up here in the input, which is walk the dog. So now we have a passing test. We're covering our Mirage behavior. We're covering our optimistic UI here. We're not using this, so we can go ahead and get rid of that. And we have a lot of aspects of this user flow covered now in this test. Now again, some people like to have kind of early expectations here. We don't need those if we don't want. And we can also go ahead and get rid of this only and make sure all of our tests pass. If you're familiar with AAA testing, you'll see that kind of the tests we wrote tend to follow that pattern. AAA testing is the idea that your test should follow a, an arrange, an act, and an assert pattern. And so you can see we're kind of arranging the Mirage server up here, and then within each test, uh, we, have, we have these steps as well. In the case of this test where there's no to-dos. We don't really have an arrangement. We just act, which in this case is just rendering the app. And then we assert that this message shows up. Down here, we arrange the server by creating uh, three to-dos here. Sometimes you'll also hear this step called assemble. And so after that assembly, we go ahead and act, which again, in this case is just rendering the app, which from the user's perspective is visiting that homepage URL. 
and then we make our expectations, our assertions. And then down here, we also don't really have an arrangement step. Our actions are really uh, this, visiting the app, filling in the form and submitting it. And then we have our expectations down here. And you could even argue that this kind of waiting for the saving indicator to be done is really more of an action. And we could move this up here and, and group all of our expectations like this. Although this doesn't really cover the optimistic UI part of it, we could also split these into two different tests. One that tests the UI and one that ensures that after that saving indicator goes away, we actually have the new to-do in our Mirage server. But these are mostly stylistic concerns. And in general, uh, AAA testing is a really good practice to follow and it suits writing tests like this with Mirage very well. So now we have test coverage for these three aspects of this application. I'll put a link to the repo with more tests covering things like editing a to-do. So after we have kind of a new to-do that's been saved, you know, we can edit it like this. We can tab out and it saves. We can see Mirage is handling a patch request. We can check it off as done. This updates as a result of that. So we could assert against that part of the UI. We could also assert, you know, when we visit the about page and come back that our changes have been saved, that this clear button actually calls a delete request to each one of these to do's. And so we can use Mirage and this automated test suite here to just completely cover all of this behavior and make sure that we don't regress on any of that as we continue working on this app. So that's it. That was a brief introduction to writing UI tests with Mirage, Jest, and React Testing Library. I hope you enjoyed it.